The Cardano ecosystem was hit by a DDoS attack, a distributed denial of service attack where a hacker tried to spam the network with scripts so that no one could use the network. I thought this was pretty interesting, but it was thwarted even before I could get online and find out exactly what was happening. In this video, I'll take you through exactly what happened, give you a quick summary, and then the solution that the community came up with to stop this attack and stop it from ever happening again. Let's get into it. Now, Sikorin here put together this tweet that explained it for Crypto Wendy O. The attacker tried spamming expensive scripts to congest the network. This cost the attacker roughly 250 an hour for about 12 hours. However, to make it that cheap, the attacker cut corners by removing a credential check. Phil from Anastasia Labs here realized he could claim that attacker's collateral because of it. The attack stopped as soon as Phil started claiming the attacker's collateral. Attack was unsuccessful, mild degradation at worst, expensive, and the attacker himself suffered the most. <laughs> so I, I, it was quite hilarious to see this all come about. Now, when I asked on Twitter, what on earth is going on? This came up as well. And this was from Alex, uh, and he posted this on the 17th of June, mentioning that 250 an hour is all you would need to spam and DDoS the Cardano ecosystem. So someone saw this and I guess looked into it and then went, hey, I think I can do a DDoS attack on Cardano and uh, take down the network, embarrass the chain or whatever it is, whatever the intention was. Well, why would you do a DDoS attack? It's uh, up to the motives of that particular person. Now, this was the average uh, chain load for the last uh, that 24 hour period. So it hit fairly high at 72% with a 93% um, on an hourly basis. So it was a very high amount of load on the network. Now, Patty actually tracked this down and it did come from a Kraken address. So I'll be very interested to see if any uh, legal action from the community could be initiated to take down this particular person and find out exactly who they were. So this is some details that Paddy had worked out from investigating on-chain data. So the first transaction of this attack happened on the 24th at 12.58 p.m. And the final transaction from the wallets was at the 25th on June the 25th at 6.44 p.m. It came from three separate wallets and you can see how many transactions came out of these particular wallets here. Now, Paddy noticed that uh, it was uh, the server, the network was a little bit slow for what he was doing at the moment. And, uh, you know, it started to poke around, do some investigation. And from the Cardano scan and uh, the tools that it was using, he worked out this particular address here and where it came from. So hopefully someone can investigate this further and see what uh, uh, who was who was funding that particular account from Kraken. They weren't smart enough to cover their tracks in that regards. Now, one of the interesting things here is that Patty mentioned that there were over a thousand uh, ADA in transaction fees coming from these wallets trying to spam the network. So that's that's a little bit of uh, ADA there going to the treasury and to state pool operators that were processing those particular transactions. So that's pretty good overall outcome for the state pool operators and the treasury here. So now we know that the attack's happening, where it's coming from, but how was it stopped? What happened from here? And Mikhail here from Harmonic Labs put together this brilliant post for me so I could follow and learn about the solution. So Mikhail took one of the transactions and deserialized the UPLC, trying to reverse engineer the code to see what was going on in this particular smart contract script. And here is the source here. I don't know if you can see it too well. Let me just full screen that. But it really doesn't do much. And the interesting thing here is that it also doesn't validate properly. So anytime you do anything with this particular script, it always will come back true. So the script should say uh, true or false, depending on what type of action that you're doing. So do I want to withdraw this money? Is this person allowed to withdraw this money? No, great, then the script won't act execute as valid and the, a random person would be able to withdraw the funds from it. But in this case, it always was true. Now, Phil from Anastasia Labs connected the dots and promptly came up with a solution and also a way to get the funds out. Let me play this conversation here from an X space. What? Each of these costs to ADA to register again. So when someone deregisters, right. they're going to have to register another 194 
which means they're going to have to pay another 400 ADA. And if it's automated, oh, you can God. just keep doing this. Wait, so, wait, 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 this is. Hold on a second. Wait, if uh, yes, if what Phil's saying is, is right. But wait, that means we can actually increase the cost of the attack for the attacker. And now maybe they fix the script, but at least in the meantime, this actually seems like a good idea. Hurry up and do it because the guy's You're definitely good. listening. So someone do that. All right, all right, all right. Well, let 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 Hold Phil up. speak. I want Phil to obviously oh, knows way more about this than any of us. I just wanted to go real quick though. You know, all four hundred and sixty three people that are in here, this is the most bullish thing that could ever happen. Come on, guys. When Solana gets attacked, it gets shut down. When Cardano gets attacked, we get paid. Listen to that. Yep. You know, as you said, Nick, uh, after you do this, the attack will be way more expensive because right now the whole attack relies on the fact that you're doing zero work. But after this, you have to actually do work. You have to check that it's a withdrawal. Structure, right. And and then 194 no longer becomes free. Right. You're doing that work times 194. And that means you have to pay for it. So, All right. well, I can I mean, I can spin up a thing right now to try to do it. If uh, if you want to get in a group chat or something or if anyone wants to get in a group chat or whatever on Discord, we can actually work on this to try to. Yeah, let's let's go crack it away. Me, Cardano, me. Dev, Dev Alliance, just, go farm. Yo, how do I get yeah, right? say, So this is pretty cool. So they suddenly realized that they could uh, deregister the stake certificates and then take all of the funds that were used to set up this particular attack. This is a great post here from Phil that uh, explains it all. So let me just go through this one for you guys. If anyone wants to claim 400 ADA from the attacker, just deregister the state credentials. They're using two ADA per state credential and they're using 194 of them for this particular attack. So it'll cost them roughly 400 ADA each time they want to start this again. And of course, anyone could just then also uh, claim that ADA and, <laughs> and there will be in a continuous loop where this attacker is just giving away the ADA to whoever wants to claim it. So the whole network is working as intended. And overall, this is just a big waste of funds for the attacker, which is really cool. So this, even with validators deserializing 194 junk scripts, roughly uh, 16 kilobytes each uh, per transaction, the validators are totally fine with processing these transactions, which involves deserializing roughly 200x what they are used to. So 200 times more than what the Cardano node actually normally operates at. So if anything, this is a really great illustration that we have a huge amount of legroom to bump up the parameters safely. So each uh, the, the state pool, the nodes that have certain parameters, we can have bigger block sizes, shorter block times, etc. So there's a lot of things that we can tweak and change. And this particular DDoS attack illustrates uh, that there's a lot of room left to be able to tweak those parameters and take and accept more blocks so that we can scale up the chain uh, effectively. So this is a brilliant, this this attack was a brilliant uh, showcase of how much more room the Kadana ecosystem had to scale up from where it is at the moment. Uh, the idea behind this attack is to take advantage of the fact that the size of reference scripts currently does not impact the transaction fee. So all those smart contracts that are going up there, they have a reference script to where it is. It's very minimal in size, so it doesn't have a fee, a big fee associated to it. But it does impact the work of the validator. However, it actually does indirectly have a cost because each script execution incurs the CEK setup costs and requires an additional reference input, which increases the transaction size. So it does cost the attacker a little bit of a fee to set everything up and get going. So this is a post from Jonathan. He's the CTO and the uh, one of the founders of Anastasia Labs alongside Phil. And he wrote this script. 200 state contracts from the attacker have been deregistered. So you can see this here. It's a state key not registered, state key not registered. So it can't actually execute that script. So that's absolutely brilliant. And uh, the really funny thing about this all, this is an update from Phil. DDoSer halted his attack after reading my tweet in an effort to protect his funds. Alas, they were too late and the pillaging of their funds is already in progress. Thanks to the free money, moron. Truly ironic that attacker who presumably wanted to damage the ecosystem actually ended up donating to the open source smart contract development work that we do at Anastasia Labs and funding Midgard. 
So I got to look up Midgard and find out what the team are doing there. I haven't uh, caught up with them in a little while, but I'd love to learn what Anastasia Labs are doing. They've uh, helped a lot in the Kadana ecosystem at the moment. You can check out the transaction here. You can see the, uh, this uh, particular script um, with the ADA coming out of it. So they've got a little bit of ADA there now and they uh, thankfully thwarted this attack and stopped it from happening. Now, if you want to have a deep dive into the solution here, Kadana Yoda put in a really detailed uh, breakdown of how this all ha how it all works, how it all happens, and all the technicalities behind it. And I love this one. This is a really good educational piece. A little bit too long for this video, but I'll put links and references down below for everything that I mentioned so that you guys can have a little bit more of a deeper dive into this particular um, issue and how it was all stopped. So this is what we can take away from this. Solana gets attacked, entire Solana goes down or 85% of transactions fail. ETH gets attacked, transactions fees explode. ADA gets attacked, transactions become slow and we work out how to rob a DDoS attacker and take all their money out of the attack. So that is absolutely brilliant. Really cool outcome for the Kadana ecosystem overall. Now I'll leave you with this and this is eutxo.org and this is a brilliant site where that you can visually see what is in each individual block on the Kadana ecosystem. And this is the discover interesting transactions and blocks on the Cardano uh, on Cardano and you know we have the most uh, recipients in a single transaction so the most uh, assets transferred but if we go down a little bit further here we see this one most scripts in a single transaction this is from the attacker itself they were doing that 194 script executions in and cramming them into blocks so this is a uh, three days ago already we can see when it actually happened the epoch and everything around it we can explore this and actually visually see what it looks like this is in the hall of fame now so this is going to be on chain forever and be a part of Cardano's history but this is the block here so this is it the these little gray things are all the script executions but you can see all of the script transactions uh, executions within this particular block. A couple of, a few, quite a few NFTs and, and whatnot came through on this particular block as well. So the chain was still working. It was still doing its thing. Just a lot of the blocks were filled up with these uh, script executions. So really interesting uh, course of events here and uh, awesome outcome for the Cardano ecosystem with the community coming together. Now, if you enjoyed this video breakdown of what's been happening in the Cardano ecosystem and you want to learn more about what's happening in Cardano, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, hit subscribe, click on the notification bell. Lots more Cardano related content for you guys. Absolutely love bringing it to you and I'll see you in the next video.